sir, you say you're a self-made man. I find that hard to believe. I created every living soul. I watched you in your morning prayer. Yet there's nothing in your hands. And at night, your heart is empty, dark and cold. You're gonna need somebody sometime that's bigger than yourself. When your whole kingdom crumbles at your feet, I'll be standing there, nail scarred hands. Strikes upon my back just in case you want to turn to me. Ma'am, I see that hurting look, I see it in your eyes. Your precious family did turn out like you planned. All the things you tried to hold on to just seem to slip away. Won't you just try holding to my hand? I saw you many years ago in a different place and time when I paid to wash your every sin away I was hoping then like I hope today you'd take a chance on me you know what but I went ahead and died for you anyway Give the Lord some praise for his mighty goodness. Are you thankful for what he did for you tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, 
sing that with us tonight. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. your prayer tonight come on give him praise in this place hallelujah thank you jesus may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Come on, sing it tonight. Hallelujah. He is for you. He is for you. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Thank you, Jesus.
the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you.
Hallelujah. Oh, come on, fill this house with the sound of praise, with the sound of God's children as they are praising the King. Hallelujah. Lord, may your favor shine upon us and upon our families and upon our children. Ah, yes, Lord God, that we may find favor in your eyes. Oh, that is our desire. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. It feels so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Lord allows us one of the greatest opportunities that can be. And that is to have a little bit of heaven right here on earth. Amen. A throne room. A place in the presence of the Lord that we can come into and feel the greatest feeling that our soul can ever feel. The closeness of our Lord. Hallelujah. Going to bring our needs before you right now. Let's just go to the Lord and let's pray. Pray for those that they need a miracle in their body right now. Let's just pray together. God, we love you and we praise you. And in Jesus' mighty name, oh, we speak. We speak uplifting healing and power to be upon those today that are down those that are fighting a battle in their flesh and their body and their health we speak strength upon them we speak healing upon them in the name of jesus our lord and our god i pray right now may that spirit of life flow May it flow, may it flow through our bodies. May it flow through the bloodstream. May it flow through the nerves and the tendons and the bone and the bone marrow. May it flow through every organ of the body and through our mind and our spirit. The healing virtue that flows, we give you praise for it, Lord. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for what you're doing right now. For what you're doing right now. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord God, we look to you. We look to you, Lord. We look to you. You're our counselor. You're our physician. You're our help. You're wonderful. You're the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and you're the Prince of Peace. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Peace is coming. Peace is coming. If you're troubled right now, peace is coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So good to see all of you. Thank you for coming out and worshiping the Lord with us here in Atascacita. I want everybody to smile as big as you can. Lift your hand. Wave at everybody around you. Hallelujah. Come on. This is that handshake and hug. We want it to get throughout the building. Don't want anybody to feel left out. Amen. We want you to know you're welcome. And we're glad you're here with us. Worship the Lord with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we've had a wonderful time so far today, haven't we? Amen. I enjoyed this morning. My, I felt the Holy Ghost. I felt the power of the Lord this morning. And I still feel it tonight. Praise God. Going to give you an opportunity to give an offering and tithes. And let's just bless the offering right now, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. You, you keep on giving. You keep on blessing us, even though we don't deserve it. And we praise you for that. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we ask that you receive our offering and tithes in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bring your offering and tithes and let's worship the Lord.
Jesus, we win. We win. We win. Oh yeah. We win. In the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus, we win. Over addiction, we win. And perversion, we win. In the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus, we win. Over fear, we win. And depression, we win. In the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus, we win. Over anxiety, we win. And rejection, we win. In the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus, we win. Bitterness, we win. forgiveness, we win. In the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus, we win. Over jealousy, we win. And in we win. In the name.
we wait in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we wait. We wait. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait. We got some We back body. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait. He's the King. We wait of glory. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait strong. We wait and mighty. We wait in the name of Jesus. We wait. presence and the power of the Lord. I feel the strength. Hallelujah. That only the Lord can give. Thank God for the blood. Oh, we don't understand all that went into the Calvary. We don't understand everything that went in to that crucifixion. The curse that was actually broken by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to have the blood on your doorpost? Aren't you glad to have it in your heart, on your body? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The worst thing that the Jews could ever do is for them to say, crucify him. And may his blood be upon us and our children. And because of that, there's been a lot of suffering that's gone on. Hallelujah. But thank God on this side of Calvary, we say, Lord, we thank you for that blood. May that be upon us and our children and our family. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so thankful for what the Lord has done for us. Amen. I call it the greatest setup. 
a setup. You make a move and it sets your enemy up where they think they're coming in for that final. But instead, it nails them. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for that setup? Hallelujah. Satan thought it was going to be over with. Thought it would be it. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, I now have the keys to hell, to the grave, and my people shall be free. Praise God. If you'll turn me to Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, I'm going to go into the word of the Lord. Revelation 12 and 17, and I just love how our children, young people, moms and dads and families just gather around the front and have church. I love that. I love that. Hallelujah. No greater place to be. Revelation chapter 12, and I'm going to read verse 17, and the dragon get some of these kids attention right here (laughs) and the dragon he was wroth with the woman and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ and I want to preach tonight we win. We win. We win. You can be seated. It is clear throughout the Word of God that we are at war. And I want to make this very clear for those that chose this hour to backslide. You don't want to do it now. You don't want to do it now. Now's not the time to be taking your spiritual vacation and enjoying the pleasures of this world for a season. Now is the time for you to get in the church like never before and for you to worship like never before and for you to praise God like never before and for you to pray for others like never before. This is the hour. This is the hour. There is a spiritual warfare that is going on. And listen to me. We are under a severe attack. I'm telling you, we are under a severe attack. And you don't want to sleep through what I'm preaching right now. Ephesians 6 and 12 tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is a spiritual wickedness in high places that is moving in every level of our political movements. There is an attack that is very severe that has come unto the people of God. Our enemy is clearly identified in four ways. In Revelations 12 and 9, the great dragon was cast out. And the old serpent called the devil and Satan. He covers the spectrum as he identifies who is wanting to destroy us. He's called the great dragon. He's called the old serpent. He's called the devil. And he's called Satan. And he comes to deceive the whole world. But he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. The dragon, the serpent, the devil, 
and Satan. The scripture tells us in the book of Revelation, the dragon, which is the old serpent, the devil, or Satan, was wroth with a woman. He was raged against the woman. Revelations 12 and 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and which have the testimony of Jesus Christ. He he was wroth or he was enraged. And that woman being Israel. Amen. And from that woman you will read earlier in the chapter where the man child came forth. Uh, hallelujah. We know who Jesus Christ is. Uh, and Satan is enraged uh, against Israel. Uh, and he wants to make war with her and her seed. Hallelujah, this war is a war against the born again people. You hear me? This war is a war against the born again people. It is a war against those who say we believe there is only one way of salvation and you must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit if you are going to enter into the kingdom of God. There is no other salvation. Do not let anybody mess with your head and tell you otherwise there is no other salvation you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven you must be baptized in Jesus name not titles there is a name that is given among men there is a name Satan hates that name he knows the power that's in the name when you say Jesus Satan trembles demons tremble because the authority is in the name when you go down in that water in that name in the name of Jesus there is a covering that comes upon you hallelujah and when you are filled with his spirit the power of the Holy Ghost you have the power of Jesus inside of you and greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in this world hallelujah 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 amen he gives identity. Scripture gives identity of those that he makes war with. Those of whom he makes war against. He is enraged. He hates Israel. Hallelujah. He hates them. Amen. And he is to make war against her seed, which keep the commandments of God and which have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I've come with a message tonight to tell you that we are at war with a dragon, with a devil, with that old serpent, and with Satan. But I've come to tell you we win. We win. We win. We win. We win. We win. Not because of what we can do. Not because of our righteousness. But because of Jesus Christ. But because of Calvary. But because of the cross. It's Christ and him crucified. That's where the power is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I say it over and over again, but don't ever get caught up into thinking you're really something. Listen to me. You're nothing without the power of God. You're nothing. Your very best falls short of the glory. You are nothing without the power of God. Hallelujah. Satan's rage, it is against the church. It is against the born again message. It is against the people of the New Testament. Hallelujah. That listened and obeyed that which Peter and the eleven stood together to preach. Hallelujah. And the apostle Paul, after being converted and transformed, preached the same message. Hallelujah. 
And the Apostle Paul found the followers of John the Baptist at Ephesus. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost? We well, never heard of no Holy Ghost. Really? Oh, my. Have y'all been baptized? Oh, yeah, we've been baptized. Well, that's great. What was the formula? I was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the man. Yeah, but that was on the other side of Calvary. He baptized unto repentance. You need to be baptized in the name. And they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus. And they received the Holy Ghost and began speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Come on, I want to preach. I want to preach because I'm going to tell you this Satan, this dragon, this old serpent, his war is against this message I'm preaching right now. This message right here, hallelujah, oh, speaking in tongues. You don't got to speak in tongues to go to heaven. I beg to differ. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. The Jews, the only way the Jews know that the kingdom of God was ever open to the Gentile people, which was a big deal. The only way they knew was when they seen them speaking in tongues. And when they seen them speaking in tongues, they realized the kingdom of God has opened unto them. Hallelujah. This message, this is a salvation message of repentance and baptism in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. He's enraged against the born again people who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But Brother Edwards, we win, we win. In the name of Jesus, we win. We win. Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus, we win. Oh, oh, come on. The Word of God, it clearly identifies who Satan is enraged against. And it identifies who is going to win. And it are those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do you have the testimony of Jesus Christ? You are the people of the name. Come on. They want to mock you. They will want to mock you. Those oneness people. Hallelujah. Yes. Those Jesus name people. They are under a severe attack of the devil. The dragon has you in his sights. And he is not going to let up because he hates the name of Jesus. He does not hate the titles. You can say God all you want to. You can say Father all you want to. You can say Son all you want to. And you can say Holy Ghost all you want to. But when you say Jesus... Now you've called on the name. Now you've got into the deep place because it's only in a name that there is authority. My name, my title, Father, won't do nothing on my checkbook at the bank. But if you put my name on it, that changes everything. Now we're under a governmental structure of authority. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Paul preached about the testimony of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 1, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. I am determined not to know anything among you 
except Jesus Christ and him crucified. This is the testimony of God. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is about the name. The testimony is this whole gospel of Jesus Christ. That Christ is God. God came in the flesh. Hallelujah. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the testimony of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Had the princes of this world knew what was going on, who was walking in the flesh, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same as in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made John 1 and 10 he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came to his own people and his own received him not John 1 and 14 and the word was made flesh hallelujah hallelujah oh come on friend there's something about this name there's something about this gospel there's something about this testimony of Jesus Christ Satan hates it he knows the power of it and he knows there is no other salvation than in that name hallelujah And I want to preach to those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. Don't ever let go of the name of Jesus. It is through that name. It is through the baptism of that name. It is through the authority and the power of that name that we win. Satan is not at war against titles. I'm going to keep saying this. It's the name of Jesus that he despises. He is enraged against it. It's the people of the name of Jesus. They are the ones that can truly declare we win. We win through the power of the cross we win we win come on hallelujah you're gonna feel the heat it is heating up now this war the severity of the battle it is heating up his time is short satan's time is short his wrath has come hallelujah but you just keep holding on and just keep claiming the name of Jesus everything I do I do it through Jesus everything that I am I am through Jesus it is through Jesus that I walk and that I function and that I live and that I preach and that I testify and that I rejoice Hallelujah. Look at it again. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Those people that keep the commandments of God. And that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm going to put a word out here. That some of you are familiar with. And perhaps some of you are not that familiar with. But that word is called fidelity. Fidelity. Satan's hatred and vengeance 
is against those who keep the fidelity of the Lord. In doctrine, in worship, and in sincerity. In other words, the true Christians who are real people, the real people of God. Fidelity has a definition, a state of being faithful. Those who keep the fidelity and accuracy is detailed as exactness. Synonyms, adhesion, allegiance, commitment, constance, dedication, devotedness, faithfulness, loyalty, and steadfast. Brother Gabe, Satan is enraged and he is at war against those that are true. Those that are sincere. Those that are real. They're the real deal. They're the real deal. James 3 and 17, the wisdom that is from above, that comes from God, it is first, above everything else, pure. Above everything else, it is pure. Then peaceable, then gentle, then easy to be entreated, then full of mercy and good fruits and without partiality and without hypocrisy. God's word calls for us to be pure. Above everything else, fidelity unto the word of God. Hallelujah, fidelity, true, loyal, faithful, steadfast, holding to the doctrine. Mm. Come on, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you are the real deal, if you are the pure in heart, if you are the one with fidelity to doctrine and worship and sincerity, hear me, you are going to feel the wrath of Satan like never before. He has declared all out war against you, but the word of God declares to him, we win. We win. We win. We win. I cannot preach this if you're not the real deal. I cannot tell you this if you're not keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ. God came in the flesh. But if you're the real deal and you're the people of the name of Jesus Christ, then I can tell you right now, we win, we win, we win. God is in us and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. Hey, man, brother, I've never felt the, the anointing I feel like I feel nowadays. I'm telling you, brother Joel, I've never ever in all of my years of ministry felt what I feel like I feel nowadays. I'm telling you, as Satan has ramped up his attack, God's grace raises up in a power greater than any attack Satan can ever use. There is not a weapon that is formed against the people, the real people, the people that keep the commandments of God, the people in the name of Jesus Christ. You have a covering, a strength that has come upon you to rise in this hour with a victory cry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I just, as I was preaching, I think it was last weekend, 
I said, I don't want the fake fire. They can have the fake. I don't want the fake. I don't want the fake. I'm not here to try to attract people. I'm here for the people that want this true holiness and this righteousness. Blessed are they that will hunger and they that will thirst for righteousness. They will be filled with a power to overcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. (sighs) Satan is a master of the counterfeit. He's called the father of lies. He is a master of deception. He's a master of trying to duplicate what you real folks have. Y'all... Just hang with me. His wrath, it is war against the original. It's war against the original. Here's a description, 2 Timothy 3 and 7. You're going to find a lot of these people, they are forever learning. They're going through their religious activities. They are forever learning. But they're never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now, He steps into a place to help you understand. He gives us an illustration. He says, now as Janus and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. It's corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. In other words, they use counterfeit to keep people in bondage. Counterfeit. You see, Janus and Jamborees back in Egypt, they were the sorcerers. And when Moses came with the original, a message from God to set my people free. Egypt is not their place. I've got a promised land for my people. Now, Pharaoh, let them go. Pharaoh said, who do you think you are? Moses said, I'll show you. And he threw the rod down and it became a serpent. They said, we can do that. Hey, all your people, watch this. And here, Janus and Jamboree. They throw their rods down and they become serpents. A counterfeit. There's a difference though. And don't you ever forget what I'm going to say right here. The difference was Moses' message was y'all got to get out of Egypt. Their message Oh, you can stay here. Of course, we know the story. That serpent of Moses swallowed up those. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you the message still is you cannot have the world and have God at the same time. It's still the same message. 
They, they, you, you, are, you are messing yourself up if you think I can just party on down and I can live it on up in that world and I can just be a Christian. Hey, we're all Christians and we're all going to heaven. That is not true. That is not true. It is the people that are keeping the commandments of God and that are having a testimony of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is a deception in a level like you have never seen before. And I say it over and over again. And if the Lord doesn't come quickly, even the elect will be deceived. They duplicate. They duplicate. They duplicate. But their message is you can be comfortable in Egypt. Hallelujah. Here's what the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 3 and 5. They have a form. They have a form of godliness, but they don't have the power. You better run as fast as you can. They've got the form, they've got the look alike. It even looks original. It even looks like. But he said, you better run. You better run. They've got a form, but they don't have the power. They don't have the power of godliness. They don't have the power that's going to set them free. They don't have the power that's going to deliver them. They don't have the power where they can stand up and say, we win. We win. In the name of Jesus, we win. They have a form of godliness, but they don't have the power to overcome. It's to the word of God. And it begins with the real thing, with the real deal, with the original. It goes all the way back. It goes all the way back. Some of y'all may not know what I'm talking about right here, but you can travel all the way back in the word of God. And that fire, that fire that was on the altar, they didn't make the fire. They didn't build the fire. They didn't strike a flint. God sent the fire. It was not man made. It was God sent. It came down from God. Fire. And it lit the altar. And it consumed the sacrifice. Because God is the consuming fire. And then from that point on until today, true fire, false fire, God send, man made. There is a fire that God sends, and there is a fire that man makes. And the one that man makes, the Word of God calls it a strange fire. Leviticus 9, 24, there came a fire from before the Lord, consumed upon the altar, and the burnt offering, the fat. And when all the people saw, they shouted, and they fell on their faces. Leviticus 10 and 1, and Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took neither of them his censer, but they put fire therein, they put incense therein, and they offered strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not and there went out fire from the Lord but this wasn't the kind of fire that puts a shout in your spirit that puts you on your face crying out to the creator this is the kind of fire that says this is the wrath of God and it devoured them and they died before the Lord it begins all the way back. The real deal, the fake that's man-made. And God says, I'll spew that out of my mouth. And you get into the Gospels. The Word 
come flesh. Jesus Christ is walking. And he begins identifying it. False worship versus true worship. In John 4 and 23, Jesus said, The hour cometh, and it now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. There were too many that were worshiping out of a form and not the power. They had lip service, but they didn't have heart service. They were religious. Hear me. They were the religion people. They had the form, but they didn't have the power. And then after Calvary, he comes down unto a place, hear me, where there is such a deception today, and that is grace covers everything. That is a lie. You are bringing people to destruction. That is not true. Grace does not cover everything. And he says there's a true grace and there's a false grace. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Be alert and be very sober-minded. For you have an enemy. Everybody say an enemy. He's the devil. He is on the prowl like a lion that's looking for something to devour. You better resist him. Stand firm in the faith. Do not let him get into your spirit. Do not let him deceive you. He is like a lion prowling, looking, seeking for the one that he can devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Yeah, with me still? And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. After you have suffered a little while, he's going to restore you. He's going to make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and forever. Amen. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, and I'm encouraging you, and I'm testifying, this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in the true grace of God. Titus 2 and 11. Here's the message of the true grace of God. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Verse 12. It teaches you and helps you say no. It comes from God. It is that extra help to say no to ungodliness and say no to worldly passions and to live a self-controlled, upright, and godly life in this present age. This is the true grace of God. There's a false grace that says, let me give you license to do what you're doing and call yourself a Christian. (laughs) 
Hello? I'm preaching about we win. And I'm preaching to whom the people, the Bible says, wins. Grace is not a coupon for unrighteousness. Oh, I happen to have me a roll of 50 right here. 50 coupons. Grace is not a coupon for disobedience. It's not a coupon for rebellion. Rebellion was and rebellion still is the sin of witchcraft. Hallelujah. Still is the sin of witchcraft. Hallelujah. You don't want to be in the devil's domain. You don't want to be living in the devil's hotel rooms. You don't want to be caught up in the witchcraft of this generation and of this hour. The grace of God, the true grace of God says no to ungodliness. No to the lust of the flesh. No to the worldly passions of this world. No to ungodly living. No to adultery. No to fornication. No to homosexual lifestyle. No to the lesbian lifestyle. No to the transgender lifestyle. No to pornography. No to rebellion. No to disobedience. the true grace of God. If you have the true power of God, you don't have a form. You have the power that was God sinned to overcome, to overcome, to overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The real deal. The real deal. Those that keep the commandments of God. Those that are of the name of Jesus Christ. Those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You will feel the severity of the wrath of Satan. The heat of the war is upon you right now. But I've got a victory report. We win. We win. Unto the people of God. Unto those that are held on. You're steadfast. You're steadfast. You're holding the doctrine. You're keeping the faith. You're holding on to our message. Jesus' name. We win. Revelation 12 and 9. Come on, musicians. And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent. The devil. Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth his angels were cast out with him but I heard a loud voice in heaven now has come salvation and strength I feel it brother Joel I feel it sister Booth I feel it Hallelujah. Now it's come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down who accuses them before God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony we win we win it's in the blood it's in the blood it's in the blood and I got a testimony and I'm not going to let go of it I'm not going to sell out I'm going to keep my testimony come on there's a strength there's a help there's a grace there's an extra it has come unto the people of God Oh, 
What are you waiting for, pastor? Where do you stand? What do you believe? I'm going to tell you right now, this boy's not going to get puffed up about saying, well, I'm this or I'm that or I believe this. But I'm going to tell you what I do believe. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. And I believe this. You better be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You better have the name of Jesus Christ and you better be holding fast to the doctrine. Revelation 19 and 11, and I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. On that part where it's talking about a name that nobody knows. It's talking about there's nobody, nobody that knows everything in his name. There's nobody. All powerful. Far exceeds the wisdom of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven follow Him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's where we are. I'm waiting for the church to go. I'm telling you, I'm waiting for a rapture. I'm waiting for him to call us out of here. And then the last seven years, And at the end of that seven years, I'm coming back with him. As he says, I've come to make war. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Very soon, very soon, the trumpet is going to sound. Very soon. Hallelujah. I know everybody, you know, there's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, and all of that. Y'all believe whatever you want to, but I'm telling you what I'm expecting. My eyes are looking up. Hallelujah. I do not have an appointment with wrath. The Bible tells me that. I am not appointed to wrath. Uh, I am of those people that have been born again of the water and of the Spirit that are keeping the commandments of God and that have the name of Jesus Christ. I have not been appointed to wrath, but unto salvation and unto deliverance. And before the wrath comes, I'm out of here. They can have the wrath. They can deal with the God that says, I am the God that got another kind of fire. Hallelujah. And I'm coming back with him. Hallelujah. I said I'm coming back with him. Hallelujah. With a robe. Ever white. Hey. 
amen following that one hallelujah and heaven is opened and a white horse and he that sat on him is faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns he had a name written that no man knew but he himself he is clothed with a vesture dipped in blood his name is called the word of God and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword therewith he will smite the nations he will rule them with a rod of iron he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the almighty God he hath on his vesture and he has on his thigh the name written the king of kings and the lord of lords hallelujah hallelujah come on come on people of the name come on on, everybody y'all sing with us everybody just help us out here the thief cometh not but to still kill and destroy we will keep holding on a little longer Stay steadfast. He comes Spite to steal all your the damnable victory. doctrines. He comes Hold to on. Steal your joy. Hold on to the name. Hold on to the message. Hold on to the being born again. Seeking whom he may devour. But I know the one who's greater. The one who has all power. For Jehovah, a warrior, is fighting for us. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.